In Creo Parametric, you can use Pro Program in order to turn the regeneration cycle into an interactive event. In other words, whenever you regenerate a model, Creo Parametric will ask you for different values. And this reflects a made to order manufacturing strategy. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have an assembly that I used in an earlier video in which I was using a notebook to drive different dimensional values. But instead, I want to use ProProgram to prompt the user to enter values each time when I regenerate. For example, if I take a look at this particular part over here, if I go to my relations dialog box, which I can access from the model intent overflow menu, I can see that this model has a number of different relations and it has parameters that are inherited from a notebook. So again, the notebook is driving the different dimensions in this particular model. I use save as in order to create a different model of this and I stripped out all the different relations and parameters in there. So let's take a look at how we can use pro program. And there are two different areas where you can access pro program. If you go to the tools tab and then the model intent overflow menu, here is the program command. From the model tab, it's available from the model intent overflow menu as well. If you ever have trouble finding different commands, use the command search and just start typing in a few letters of the command. And if you hover over the different options, it'll highlight where in the interface you can find the commands, but also you can execute the commands directly from the search results. When I click on program, I get the menu manager. You can see that there are a few different choices in here. The first one is to show design. I'm going to click on that and that'll bring open a dialog box where I can take a look at the program that is used in order to generate this particular part. There are five different sections in the program. The first section is the header. You can see up here it gives me the version of Creo, a rev number, and a listing inside of here. The next section is the input section. And right now there's nothing except for the keywords input and end input. This is where you're going to do most of your work inside Pro Program. It's going to be adding these inputs and then using the third section, the relation section, to assign the different values of the inputs to your different model dimensions. Also, you can use if then else statements inside of both the inputs and the relations in order to calculate the different values. The fourth section in the program is the model section, and that's the main body of the program. That's where you're going to have all the different statements that execute the features in the part. So for example, here we have add feature, it's got the internal feature ID. Here we have the different elements and their information. For people who used Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, this is essentially the same format as the old model dialog boxes whenever you are creating or redefining features. Back then, edit definition was called redefine. And so then we've got information about some layers in here, and then it goes on to the very next feature. And it'll have all the different features corresponding to the main features in the model. Now let's scroll on down here, and you can see all the various different features that define this particular part. And so for example, in here, we have a pattern of holes, and here you can see the what the pattern of holes looks like in the program. But let's scroll all the way down to the bottom to the end of the program. The fifth and final section is the area for mass properties. And here with mass properties, it's going to calculate the mass properties and then end mass prop closes that out. So again, those are the five different sections of pro program or the program that generates your different models. It's the header, inputs, relations, model section, and mass properties. Let's close out of here. So again, the show design is if you want to take a look at the program that is used to run the model. In this video, I'm just going to show some basic inputs and relations. So let's go to edit design. 
And here we have the editor for Notepad in order to add the information in here. And I'm going to put in here some empty lines so I can start typing in. And I want to ask the person who's running the program or regenerating the model for five different values. I want them to give me the number of bolt holes in the top and bottom. I also want to get the inlet diameter and the outlet diameter of the plate and also the height of the part. So to write your different inputs, it's going to be two lines for each input. The first line is going to be the name of the uh, or excuse me, the name of the parameter that you want the value assigned to and the type of parameter. And the second line is going to be the prompt you want the user to be asked. So the first one that I want is the number of bolt holes in the plate. So I'm going to call that plate bolt holes. And the three different types of inputs that you can have are numbers, strings, and yes, no, and yes, no uses an underscore between yes and no. In this particular example, I'm just going to input numbers. So I'll put in plate bolt holes number, and then on the next line, I'm going to write the prompt for the user. And end quote. And then I would continue doing this for all the other different parameters that I want entered. And I'm going to put in a little edit in the video here so that you don't see all the typing. I'll just come back when I have all the different inputs placed in here. And I'm back. So here we have our five different inputs. We have the plate bolt holes and then the type. Here we have the prompt. And I'll repeat that for the pipe bolt holes, the plate outer diameter, the pipe outer diameter, and the height of the reducer. Now the next part is we're going to assign these different values to model dimensions. And I already happen to know the different model dimensions. So let's put in some spaces in here. And you can use comment lines, or rather you should use comment lines. I'm going to use my forward slash and an asterisk to explain what the different ones are. And so here we have uh, the first set of com um, co the first comment, the first relations are going to be the number of holes. And before coming in here, I took a look at the model to figure out the different dimensions. So let's put in P11, that's the number of bolt holes in the plate that we will assign to the input, which is plate bolt holes from above. And let's repeat that for the other, the second input. That dimension is P36 for the number of instances in the pattern of holes on the pipe. And so again, that's going to be equal to pipe bolt holes. And then for the next relations, we are going to assign the diameters and the height. I'm going to put another edit in here after I assign those different dimensions. And then I'll come back and show a few other relations that I'm going to add in here. All right, I added three more relations in here that are taking the other three inputs and assigning them to the different model dimensions. Also, there are other features that I want driven parametrically by these different inputs. So I'm going to add in a few other relations for those. And those are controlling the diameters of the holes at the inlet and the outlet, and also the bolt circle diameters. So I will come back after I type in these different values. All right, that is good. I did make a minor change to a couple of my inputs to make sure that people understand that they're entering the diameters of the holes at the inlet and the outlet. And here I have, let me change this to reflect that these are the flange diameters. That's good. Here I have my end relations, everything assigned in here. And that's all I'm going to do for this particular one. Later on in other videos, I'll show you how to use if then else statements and also how to use some of the functionality in assemblies like execute statements. But everything is good here. So let's go to the file and I always do save and then let's do an exit. And so now ask, do I want to incorporate my changes into the model? I'm going to say yes. 
And now we have a get input menu. And it's asking do we want to use the current values or do we want to enter values or do I want to read the values from a file? So let's take a look at what happens when you regenerate. I will hit the regenerate button. And now here we have the get input menu. And I can use current values, read from a file, or I will enter in the values. And when I click that, here we have checkboxes for all the different dimensions that we want to change. Let's say for this first time through, I want to change all of these different dimensions in here. So I will check all of them and then choose done select. And now here we have in the information window, it's asking for the number of bolt holes in the plate. Let's put eight there. And the number of bolt holes in the outlet, let's use eight for that. And now it wants to know the outer diameter of the plate hole. Let's use a value of 40 for that one. And the outer diameter of the pipe hole in the outlet, let's use 20 for that. And now for the height of the reducer, uh, let's use a value of 50. And when I hit that, you can see that here we have a different set of dimensions, a different configuration of the model. Once again, if I regenerate, I can choose to enter in new values. And let's say that the only thing I want to change this time is the height. I will just check that one and then choose done select. And then let's change the height to a value of 25. And it regenerates. And there we have a much squatter one. Now that I've created these different values in here, if I want to create this as a family table instance, I can go to my model intent overflow menu again and then choose program. Then with instantiate, it'll allow me to generate this as an instance. So I will just call this height 25 and then hit the enter key. Now when I click on done return, if I go to the model intent overflow and family table, here you can see that we have a family table instance in here with the different values that are configured in here. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.